hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is Richard, G'day. who's ready for takeoff with Uber, and Crafty, who's been looking at what makes an off-roader worth feeding. Oh, I've been looking. And we'll update you on everyone's favourite Bold Vision short timeline enthusiast in this week's Musk Watch. So stay with us. But first of all, some feedback, and um, not some feedback, there's been quite a bit, and it's all been good. So Twigda says that he's glad that I said Q7 this time, which I might refer to me uh, mistakenly uh, talking about the MLB platform for the VW Group underpinning various cars, including the A7, when I meant to say Q7. Right. All right, so my let-out clause there is that it also does underpin the A7. There so you go. That's right. So there you go. But I did make a blue, and thank you for reminding me of that one. Sanoi Nimbus um, says, last, God, Sanoi. says last week's podcast made him think, which he admits to not doing very often. <laughs> and uh, thinks he thinks luxury SUVs are killing real four-wheel drives. Mm. So, mm. you know, a rangy on massive rims, never yeah. leaves the tarmac, the mm. Defender's dead, mm. and he wants the Land Cruiser 70 Series to live forever. Yep. Yep. Uh, but he's also concerned that the, the workhorse to show pony syndrome might migrate to four, uh, four-wheel drive utes yeah. um, and that it could yeah. kill that off, that people all of a sudden are, those SUVs are soft, I'll, mm. I'll go and get a ute mm. and they dress it up and all yeah. of a sudden utes are killed. Yeah. So that seems like a, a reasonable kind of concern. Yeah. Thank you for that That's feedback. Good feedback, yeah. Sanoy. Uh, Jacob Matthew uh, was just happy that we pronounced his second name correctly. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, How do you pronounce it? Is it? Well, it's not Matthews, it's Matthew. Matthew. Oh, so he yeah. obviously gets yeah. Matthews a lot. Ah, so was yes. pleased that we just went the yes singular mm. singular hammer rocks hey oh, she uh, played the game. hammer it Good wonders hammer. wonders what would have happened if Land Rover had been able to supply all the four wheel drives required for the Snowy Hydro scheme uh, scream <laughs> scheme <laughs> well, it was uh, it would, would, been a party would Toyota accounts. would in, would Toyota enjoy the reputation it has today if the Land Cruiser hadn't been brought in to fill that gap you know Ooh. it was a a it's a great of, point. It great is. point, yeah. yeah. That it, so much of it was underpinned by that, you know, yeah. Aussiness and mm. what yeah. have you. Great Absolutely. point, Hammer yep. Rocks. Uh, Brad Parker appreciates the podcast but would like us to dig a bit deeper. What? Says that um, we're a bit too high level for his limited podcast listening time. So mm. he wants okay. more depth and grit. So, so, we'll, so we'll, dense. We'll, we'll take yeah. that on board. Mm. We've got a half an hour, We roughly. Uh, we sometimes go over. And we try and cover a little bit of ground. Mm. We're not yeah. we're not necessarily trying to please everyone all the time, yep. but we do want to mix it up a little bit. But we hear what you're saying. Believe, so like, believe us, though, we would like to go deeper, but there's only we'd be so here many for minutes. Hours. Yeah. We'd be yeah. here for hours. Oh, exactly. So, yeah. But we hear you. It's really yeah. good, uh, Brad. Thank you. We love deep diving. Um, David Anderson, he's got a theory. Says if someone's online name is Licks Batteries, it's likely to be a Sparky, right? <laughs> or Kisses Asses, maybe a politician. Yes. Oh, yeah. So Hammer Rocks must be a criminal, yeah. uh, presumably on oh, yeah. hard labour. Hard labour. Yes. Or uh, a geologist. Okay. So yeah. that's that's, that's his call. theory, not yeah. bad. I'm thinking okay. geologist. You reckon? Yeah. I reckon. He's yeah. smart. He Hammer. also likes the special edition Utes, has a Ford Ranger, what he calls the ultimate poverty pack. Mm-hmm. 3.2 auto alloys, rear diff lock, yeah. touchscreen and car play, and... An XT50 badge. Oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> thinks the BT, uh, BT50 badge, yeah. sorry. Thinks oh, yeah. the BT50 boss is an improvement, but reminds us that while you can polish, you can't polish a turd, yeah. mm. you can cover it in glitter. <laughs> That's uh, true. Which is pretty good. Very true. SC asks whether we're in a shed or a World War II bunker. A bit, a both. bit of both. And I, yeah. I, I, look, yeah. I would yeah. say to him, you have no idea how far underground we are. We are. Yeah. We've yeah. engaged the boring company to actually get us. Here. Yeah. So talk Bo- about a boring as in as in drilling, drilling. not boring yeah. as in you don't. Oh, advising us on how yeah. to be That's right. even more yeah. boring. How many <laughs> kilometres are we below the surface? Uh, we can't we share can't that share information that. So, because if anyone's deep. putting a range on their bunker buster, yes. we don't want them to no, know. No, yes, no. yes. Um, and well, also did. resonance says. James, type of guy to fill goodbye in fifty languages in Google Keep and practice at free time. Wow. Mm. So I'm. Nice. Guessing he might want me to practice my goodbyes. I have a habit of signing off uh, in review the different videos. Languages, with a yeah. Language of the ethnic origin mm. of the car in question. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, thank you very Which much, Resonance. Tie, if it's you. Or whether he's asking other people to practice, I'm not I'm sure. I'm very yeah. lost. Yeah, uh, too. Now, look, speaking of lost, some would say this company is, oh, is firing in all directions. But Richard, take us where 
Uber is heading. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Look, we all know who Uber is. They are the rideshare company, and they've also branched out into Uber Eats, and they'll deliver anything you want, basically. Uh, now they want to be able to deliver people by air. Uh, Uber Air is the, uh, I suppose, the aerial taxi uh, division of, of Uber. Um, and they have chosen Melbourne, along with Dallas and Los Angeles, as the three trial cities for their Uber Air aerial taxi service. Isn't Dapto in there as well? Dapto is in there as well. Oh, maybe that'd, a, that'd, that'd be handy. Too. Maybe it's Dungog. <laughs> Dungog has got a great RSL, up, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'd be, be an gun. expensive fare, though. But talking of be. fares, um, the idea is, is that the fare to, say, um, Tullamarine Airport from, say, Melbourne CBD would be the same amount as a, a road Uber. Mm. It'd be $70. Mm even though it only takes five minutes, but mm. it's about a kilometre sort of yeah. fare. Um, okay. Now, Elon Musk, who we'll be covering later in, in, in Musk Watch, likes to go underground. He mm. believes the future of transport is underground in tunnels. Mm-hmm. Um, Uber believes it's above the ground. Uh, either way, just driving to work this morning, the roads were clogged, like yeah. unbelievably yeah. so. It obviously cars... So you pressed the button, the wings came, came out, out, and up I you, went. Up off you went. went. That's right. Nice. So obviously what well, Uber's decided, look, cars in cities aren't working. Yeah. They also made a controversial statement, and that is that car ownership will end. Now that, I don't know where that leaves us as motoring journalists, <laughs> right? But car ownership will end according to Uber. Oh, yeah. um, and they believe that in the future, you'll get into an automatic, uh, you know, Uber Air and you'll, you'll, you'll fly wherever you go and then probably get out at your destination, then get in an Uber taxi, ground taxi, and then go there. Uh, the type of vehicle that they're mentioning is a VTOL. It's a vertical takeoff and landing system. Mm. Uh, so it's got a forward propeller. It looks like a plane. It's got fixed wing like a, like a plane, but it's also got helicopter style props. Because I looked at that video, Richard, and to mm. me, it looks uh, very close to a tilt rotor, yeah. which, which is yeah. already a thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. the yes. vertical takeoff, the engines yeah, yeah, yeah. tilt over yeah. and you start flying. I don't know whether they're inventing a new wheel here. That's or, it. Mm. I mean, I'm a big fan of Blade Runner, big fan of Back to the Future. <laughs> I want cars without <laughs> wheels like everybody else. Yep. Uh, and this is not quite it, but it kind of is. I think the first, the initial ones will be these type of fixed wings ones. And the other thing I noticed, unlike an Uber car, Yes you arrive at an Uber kind of thing, yeah. this monolithic Uber central, yep. and you drop down there and then you get in your Uber car, right? Which would be autonomous, That's I it. presume. Uber has wow. named these for us already ah. as Skyports. Skyports. Right? Sky a Skyport ports. will be a, a, a landing pad on top of a building, and, and you probably, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the footage behind us of the Skyport of the, the Uber Air's landing, and, and there's, the, there's that lady walking across the tarmac to, to her Uber Air, and in a way she goes it's very futuristic but uber reckons it's about three years away it's amazing oh i was gonna say yeah. it's amazing they've got one done to such a high quality <laughs> it's such it's an all, early stage look this is the thing like we love i love i love flying cars and the whole concept of it and you know we have covered flying cars in this podcast but you know many 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 episodes there's been the kitty hawk flyer uh, there's been aston martin's flying car there's been audi's prototype and i've just been let down constantly um but i reckon this well, what like goes that. up must yeah, come down. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, look, I reckon this possibly could be the biggest chance flying cars have, and that's commercial backing like Uber. They've got, some, they've got three big uh, aeronautical companies behind them. Uh, obviously, Uber aren't going to build the technology themselves, so they've hired people who know how to build these things. Uh, CASA, uh, the, uh, the, the the regulator in uh, Australia for, for aviation, um, has, has basically helped bring it out here. Um, so they're going to be testing to see whether it's safe to use. I mean, but then again, you could always argue that cars aren't safe to use. Well, uh, I'd reckon my two bobs is that I reckon the closer you're getting to a flying car, the less it's a car. Well, to, to me, it looks like yeah. it's a little plane. Well, it's a light you're, aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. you're exactly yeah. right. It's and a helicoptery plane. It's a choppery thing. And they will become sort of more scaled up versions, as you mentioned in the past, of, of drones. Now, if you really, now that's, there's, there's a whole lot of Kool Aid in this as well, and I found myself really <laughs> falling for it. But if you feel for yourself falling for it as well, just go to another podcast, Joe, the Joe Rogan uh, pod- podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, and if you want a fresh perspective on whether flying cars will exist in the future, just watch that. He's yeah. got a very realistic approach to it. Uh, spoiler alert, he says no. Um, so, but <laughs> oh, yeah, you've just ruined You've got to watch it, though. The way, he, the way he knocks it down is incredible and very, very realistic, too. It's so unlike him to be logical <laughs> and make <laughs> sense about things. Exactly. Very, the big ideas. Yeah, he's yeah. very smart, very attractive man. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, well, my, that too. <laughs> my most pressing question with regards to sort of flying cars and whatever, and, uh, you know, if they're like sort of mini uh, journeys on a plane, chicken or beef? <laughs> oh. like I wonder if you hop on and they say, Mr. Berry? Yeah, uh, no. Would you like a white or, wine? No, no. Or? If it's like a, a Rex flight, mm. sweet or savoury, <laughs> and you get a biscuit or a little mini packet of chips. Or if it's Tiger Air, they just say, oh, sit the hell down. Star, and shut shut down. And yeah. sh- absolutely. Yeah. I, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't agree more. That's just right. shut up. Yeah. We'll be there soon. Who asked yeah. you? We might not be going where you want to <laughs> go. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Anyway, that's the latest report on Uber Air. We'll be following it up. They've got three years to trial it. They reckon by 2023, we'll be travelling through our major cities to our airports by Uber Air. So you'll be lined up at Tullamarine from next week, just waiting. You'll, <laughs> you'll be so keen, you'll just be ready to go. I, I'm ready to go. I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson's going says, to be lining up. I don't think up. he'll be lining up no. any day. Soon. DeGrasse Tyson says no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, Crafty, moving on to your good self. Uh, a philosophical question uh, oh, based in one. the real world. What makes a good off-roader? And you are the man to approach that vexed question. Give us your thoughts. Oh, it's a it's a topic that sort of raises the hackles of, of, of many a, a, a bloke and a woman uh, around the place. <laughs> People have their it's it's a contentious I had my issue. hackles removed yeah. as a child. <laughs> so yeah. did I. Same time as the Along appendix. Along with my yeah, appendix and Tonsils. possibly some other organs that my parents sold on the black market. <laughs> the left hemisphere of your brain. <laughs> <laughs> that went long ago, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that people have really strong ideas about. Uh my my point is, and the yarns on carsguide.com.au, sorry, I'll, I'll hang near the mic for that, <laughs> carsguide.com.au. Have a read of the yarn. Um, that's the headline, what makes a good off-road vehicle. Uh, I don't think you need a hell of a lot of stuff. Um, I love the aftermarket uh, just as much as anyone. I love, uh, you know, aftermarket suspension and, and, uh, and all those sort of things, underbody protection uh, you know, recovery points that you get uh, thrown on your vehicle after you've bought it. Uh, it's a wonderful mob of people, but I think sometimes people sort of overstate the value of it and, and underestimate the capabilities of the of a car as yeah. it comes out of the as box. it rolls out of the showroom. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and I think, and I say in the yarn again for more detail, read it um, obviously, uh, and you'll have your own opinions. But but it all boils down to talk. Talk, so pulling power, tyres, make sure you've got tyres. And also the important thing with tyres to remember is not only uh, all terrains, I recommend because that's a good all-round sort of tyre, but the pressures you run them at. Yeah. People people forget that, you know, you get stuck on the beach, yeah. all you've got to do is drop the tyre pressures. Take you are, your time, you are drop a tyre pressure fanatic, yeah. you're right. yeah. it's, it's really a large part of your life, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. yes. yes. I, I live and breathe and the fall tire asleep pressures. on it. <laughs> It's well. It's one of those things that 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 once you realise how important yeah. you know such a basic thing is, then you'll pretty much be able to do you know the whatever lion's like. share mm. of trips. And I suppose you like to your that. point about all of the aftermarket gear that you can buy, the further you go down that road, the less you are to drive it on road. You yeah, know that that, that yeah. compromise shifts yeah. very much more towards look. You only want to drive it off yeah. road. It's yeah. no good for anything else. Yeah. Ab- yeah, absolutely. And again, I'm not undervaluing the aftermarket because that is an, a, a, a crucial part sure. of the culture of the community uh, of Australian industry. Mm. Uh, a wonderful bunch of people, and they're doing great work all the time. Some of the products are incredible from ARB, Ironman, Four by Four. Yep. All of those mobs, fantastic. But I'm just the point of the yarn is don't get sort of hung up and dazzled and think that you've got to load your vehicle up with everything. If you sort, if you make sure basic things like torque, you know, yep. you, mm. you you actually buy something that's able to, and it depends on your lifestyle. If you don't want to, you know, drive up rock steps, then you don't need a hardcore. Can I ask you a question? Sure. A most most time. most useful aftermarket accessory and least useful. What do you reckon? Ooh, geez. Geez. Great, yeah. great um, question. A, a lot Questions. of people, well, yeah, yeah, well, I'll go for least useful. Well, well, it's not that, but people, again, overvalue it. And uh, and if you're spending a lot of time in suburbia, why have a ball bar? It adds right. extra weight to right. your vehicle. Yeah. It ups your fuel consumption. Uh, a lot of people have them. And they don't do any rural kilometres, yeah, so you're not yes. going to you're not going to come anywhere near an animal, uh, yeah. and you're not you know your possibility of an animal strike, whether it be a, a stray cow or a kangaroo, are very minimal because you spend your whole time in the city or yeah. in suburbia. Yeah. Most most important, um, I guess suspension yep. is, is 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 pretty good. Like, um, but again, people go overboard. Like they think, oh, you know, we've got to get this thing raised right. Yeah. You don't. 
you no, don't. Yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. And then you start messing with, uh, you know, sort of engineering and, and dimensions and that sort of thing. And you can actually have legal sort of repercussions, if not right and handling sort of and, and yeah. safety repercussions if, you, if you're doing so it. So here's a case in point. What have you done to your own vehicle? Your, you know, classic uh, Nissan. <laughs> Good question. My 10-year-old my Navara. Uh I've I've not done a lot. Mm. Um, I'm thinking of uh, of uh, oh, it's got all road uh, sorry all terrain tyres on uh, a Toyo Open Country, mm. um, and I've not done anything else to it. Um, it was used before I had it as a as a sort of ranging vehicle for a photographer who specialised in bushfire photography. Wow! So it's done a lot of hard case. Yeah. But as standard, no paint yeah. left it, on it. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty all, much, it's, 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 it's been yeah. it's been touch, yeah, blistered. It's been touch <laughs> parked up against every tree in every uh-huh. you know, state forest and, okay. and, and national park. Mm. But uh, I haven't done a lot to it, uh, admittedly. But again, I've done some hard, hard four wheel driving in it. Yeah. Um, and it's not the toughest thing around. It's not the str- you know strongest thing around. It's not the torquiest thing around by mm. far. It's only got two point five liter engine and. But it, it suits me fine because my family don't like bouncing around on rocks. Fair and enough. That would it, would it be the 80 20 rule that, you know, your standard car is going to get you 80% of the way? But if you're a real off road enthusiast and you want to get that last 20%, which might be rock hopping and all that stuff, that's when you need to think more about yeah, the, yeah. the heavier duty stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that that's being pretty general about it. But yeah. essentially, yes. Yeah. I mean, again, people underestimate the capabilities of their vehicle and sort of overvalue the importance yeah. of, of loading it up with bull bars and roof right, racks right, right. if you're not going to go out camping all the time yeah you know then you don't need a lot of the it's more gear. A hindrance than a help exactly do a yeah. lot of these like companies working with warranties as well uh, yeah absolutely yep. yeah, yeah yeah and i mean uh again uh, uh they're smart companies and they build fantastic products yep um and i would encourage people i would actively encourage people if that's your lifestyle yeah do it I, it, it yeah you know i mean load it up with as much gear as you can yeah, yeah. But have a think about where it's going to spend the, the because majority you mentioned of its bull time. Bars, so. And I mean, a heck of a lot of work has been done in terms of compatibility with yeah, airbags yeah. and all of that stuff. Yeah. So it's not as if you're compromising safety. It is, as you say, more about how are you going to use this. Yeah, vehicle. absolutely. So you've got to think, uh, you know, sort of hard about your lifestyle and what it's going to do. If it's yeah. going to spend the majority of its time in and around cities and in suburbia, then, you know, there's no need for bull bars and, and uh, you know, and that sort of thing and jacking it up really high. And yeah, you know, precious few bulls in the in a city, yeah. you don't you yeah. don't see a lot of roos either. No, no. But well, well, I mean, you know, in uh, during during times of drought, I mean, they come in, you know, ever closer. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I I think about where you're going to spend the, you know, most of your time in it, and 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 sort of uh, gear it up to suit. Good. Okay. Well, perfect. So people should uh, a let us know what they think. If you're a four wheel drive enthusiast and you have got some bits and pieces on your vehicle, mm. let us know what they are and why. Mm. Um, and if you haven't. Uh, tell us as well. Just join in the conversation. That'd be brilliant. Absolutely. And and have a read of, of Crafty's yarn on Please. that as well. Now, we are going to move to our garage because, of course, we've yes. got that long elevator that brings us down to oh, yes. depth. And yeah. all the cars we are, are very safe. We are deep. Yeah, yeah, Iron Man style. Yeah, yeah. Under the I mean, the yeah. oxygen supply happily is, <laughs> yeah. is pretty good. It uh, gets hot, though. It does it's get, hot down it here. Does get very hot. We are so True. deep. We're near. Yeah, we're getting to that mantle. <laughs> uh, so, Richard. Yes. You've been in a car that's uh, a rare one oh. on Australian roads, but uh, less so recently. Tell us about it. I am currently driving, and you might be able to see the images behind us if uh, you're watching on, on, on the YouTube. YouTubing. Uh, the, what, what would you call it? HSV or Chevy? It's, it's a Chevrolet uh, 2SS Camaro. Right. Um, Camaro 2SS, which in the Camaro range in the, in the US is fairly high up. Yep. It's not as high as the LT1, which uh, which has just been reviewed by uh, Mal Flynn on our, on our website. Uh, it's sort of like a, the more uh, garden variety Camaro, I suppose. And, and you reviewed the first one which came I to did. Australia. Yep. Now, this is the revised update with yep. the face that no one likes. Um, <laughs> and... Hold on, is yeah. that you or the, or the yeah. car? Yeah. Well, look, Hello, yeah, look. a Camaro review with the face <laughs> that no <laughs> one likes. <laughs> Just me. Well, look, actually, we're a good, we're a good matching because exactly. no one likes our faces. <laughs> this poor Camaro, it has been given uh, a sort of a, a, a new front-end treatment which instantly caused a reaction in, in the US, and that was because the crossbar which goes between the upper grille and the lower grille was painted the same colour and was black. So it looks like one just big predator mouth, and it mm. looks it doesn't look 
good. It's challenging to look right. at. Challenging. Yeah, um, yeah. That's a polite so you could, But the car itself, uh, you know what? It's a, it's like an albino rhino. It's it's <laughs> going to be extinct one day. And while you've got one, just ride it. Ride it around. Ride it around. Actually, that's really bad wow. <laughs> analogy. <laughs> but, <No> rhino. <laughs> it reminds me of like the Tontons from Star Wars yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Saddle up ride an albino going. around. Yeah. Don't ride yeah. an albino, albino rhino. Rhinos. Sounds like um, something to buy. What, 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 yeah. what I mean is, right this, in, in a very short period of time, this type of car is going to be outlawed. We're heading towards an all-electric world. And yes, that's probably the right thing to do. It's like eating porridge. Like, it tastes disgusting, but you know it's good for you, right? <laughs> and electric vehicles are the same. Much as but albino seriously, the yeah. Camaro <laughs> is... There goes our own very good for you. sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> Camar- Uncle Toby's. I know. Yeah, they can Uncle throw that Toby's. out the window. La snack. <laughs> um, seriously, the Camaro is the full English, well, the full American <laughs> breakfast. It is the bacon, it's the egg, it's the hash browns. It's all Wheat bad coffee. for you, but it's great. Full fat, oh, high cow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sound yeah. uh, that <clears throat> the LT1 nice. engine is just incredible. 339 it's kilowatts. Rumble through um, your bones. It's it's quick. It doesn't handle incredibly well, but it's a muscle car, so it doesn't need to. It's not a C63 AMG or something like that. Um, it's got presence. It's a bit clumsy to drive because the wing mirrors are so big, you, you can't really see sort of you know out your windows. But <laughs> but that's a muscle car, yeah. and you have to suffer for it, and it rewards you in spades. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've really enjoyed it. That's the charm of it, isn't it? The yeah. fact that it's a sort of yeah. big. Balls it doesn't make any bones about it. It's no, just no. is what it is. Exactly. By the way, yep. I've only had it 24 hours. <laughs> uh, but um, I've fallen in love with it already. Look, everything I've fallen in love with, I've only known for 24 hours. So, look, I, I'm, I approve of it. It's good. Okay, Jeez. very good. Mm-hmm. Now, you, Crafty, a big rap. we'll swap to your good self. This was a car you were threatening to drive last week. I, and in I the interim, you have week, actually yeah. done so. I've actually been in the thing, yeah. And um, uh, it was it was a Ford, Ford Transit custom van, the short wheelbase. Yep. Um, I forget all the specifics right now, mate, but uh, read carsguide.com.au. My <laughs> yeah. yard's on there yeah. in the in the tradey section. Yes. Um, unreal. Like right. great, to, great to drive. Yep. I don't spend a lot of time in vans. I've only sort of been in and out of them every now and again. Um, and, uh, yeah, unreal. So the, so very comfortable, mate. The thing, the, one of the first things that pops into my mind when it's a one-box van like that is the booming noise that you occasionally get out of the mm. load space behind you? There's a lot yeah. of echoing and bouncing yeah, sound around. Yeah. Is that a factor? You'd or? expect so, but no, I, really? I didn't experience that. Yep. Uh, I drove it without any gear in, um, and 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 just a couple of kids up front, my own. Um, oh, good. And uh, and I also <laughs> <laughs> we also that would be we a also bit weird that words. would be a bit weird. Yeah. yeah Come yeah. to Uncle Crafty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Hop in, not dodgy, <laughs> creepy old guy. Um, and we, uh, I also loaded it up with about 600 kilograms of, uh, of magazines I picked up from a printer. And that was pretty interesting. Um, no, no, my own right. magazine. These, these are new magazines? Much. Thanks very much. This, is this your personal collection? <laughs> that's, that's my collection of that's, wheels I, magazines. You read the, the that, articles. Uh, it's, uh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> I rated okay. Mel Flynn's so archive of wheels magazines. Two tons of porn. That's two correct, kids yeah. and a lot of magazines. Yeah. And how did it go with that? Uh, again, just, unreal. Yep. Like I, I really enjoyed the thing. Drives really well. Uh, you know, you're talking about riding and handling yes. in, the, in the Camaro. Yeah. And this thing... Yeah, nice. And it's very much like a car. What about if you're an an actual working person, you've got it as your working vehicle, what about places to just put stuff? You know, they they always need plenty of that kind of stuff. Well, you know, have you ever seen a van, like, you know, obviously a a courier van or something, without like the front dash loaded up with just crap? Just books and notepads and pens and, you know. It's the tradies office. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's a mobile office. You're absolutely right. Well, this thing, this thing, and again, I don't spend a lot of time with them, so maybe this is not a new thing, but but all of the receptacles and the areas Mm. for storage and it's got so many cup holders and all that sort of thing. You know, I sat the kids in, no, I didn't Ah. (laughs) Put, put them in a Cup holder, but um, it's a newborn in there. Loads, the <laughs> loads of very safe, very yeah. safe, yeah. yeah. But but loads of space for everything, Terrific. and everything is easy to reach yep. if you're driving because it has to be. If you're spending all your time, mm. all your working day in a van, you need yep. to be able to reach things. It's got that sort of floating uh, tablet screen, yep. easy to use wow. on the fly. That's pretty impressive. Um, really comfortable. I was I was half expecting to get in and, you know, the, sort of the, the, the front seat, hard as a bench and that's sort of, yeah. But I, I spent a lot of hours in it. 
No, because Ford's comfort. been building the transit since oh, forever. Yeah. No, for you know, sure. So they're, they're well really, versed in that. Yeah, yes. and they and they've really sort of sharpened their approach and and yeah, unreal. I think Good. every British bank robbery movie is involved. <laughs> it involves a transit. Someone's or a tumbling. Mini. Someone's <laughs> tumbling out of a transit. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I actually well, here's a little bit of uh, trivia for you blokes and our listeners slash watchers. Uh, I drove across Europe uh, in the late nineties in a in a transit. Did you? Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, so and, there you go. And, right, and, and that and was been and a, that was very uncomfortable. There's been a step ahead <laughs> since then. <laughs> we presume. Well, yeah, yeah, good, very good. good. Twenty years later. So. I'll um, quickly mention that I've been driving a couple of different versions of BMW's X7, which, as the oh. name implies, is the kind of seven series of the SUV range for BMW. It's immense. Uh, it's built for America, really. It's built in America. Mm. Um, it's built in South Carolina. And initially, I was hesitant. It's like, oh, this is almost obscene. You know, this vehicle's so large and yeah. so much material's been used to, to build it. And you're just going, oh, I don't know. And then you drive it and go, oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's just, oh, so nice. You know, the seats are so comfortable and there's so yeah, much yeah, space yeah. because, yeah. you know, space is luxury. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, you, right. you do have that room to kind of spread out. Yeah. And each of the three rows, even the way back seat, yeah. As cup holders, USB yeah. points, I, I at 183 yeah. centimetres could sit in there pretty comfortably. Really? Yeah. Unreal. So it's big enough for seven people. Yeah. And with all the seats up, you've still got more than 300 litres of wow. cargo Jeez. space. So you Jeez. can put a bit of yeah, stuff in. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. that big. Yeah. And this is a three litre V6, eight speed auto. Smooth as butter, you know. Mm. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you're ranging from somewhere around 120 up to about 170. There's an M50D version, yeah. which is this kind of small power station yeah. on wheels yeah. that just gets you around, and a, a an X Drive 30D, which okay. is your more approachable yeah, yeah, yeah. 120. Yeah. So enormous and troubling, but wonderful. That <laughs> that, that grill though. Like. Oh, the grill. <laughs> I said in the video, it reminds me of a certain carrot-loving bunny. You know, yeah. You've just got the, the big two wow. big choppers out the front there. It's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But there are active air flaps behind there that allow the engine to warm up more quickly if you've got them closed off. Okay. And oh, okay. then they'll open up to cool down when required is, or is shut for aero efficiency. Sort of function, yeah. automatic function? Yeah, you don't have to Auto make automatic it. function. Wow. So Unreal. They're big, but they're big for a reason. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Allegedly. So. And, and lovely to drive. Oh, nice to drive. Amazing yeah. to drive. So yeah. comfortable. It's like a cushion. Yeah. Just, but not willowy. Not wallowy. Not, yeah, it's still yeah, pretty yeah. well buttoned down. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the steering could get a little more feel, but it's just so easy to well, drive. This is the thing. Like BMW have needed a sort of GLS competitor for yeah. a long time. That's and it. that X5 was trying to do the job. It wasn't a seven-seater. No. It just couldn't do the job so of that car as well. So it's a Q8. Yes. Audi yeah. Q8. On and, an um, and, 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 we'll and a GLS, and a we'll GLS um, competitor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. and it's right there with them in terms of size. Yeah. In fact, its wheelbase is longer than either of those really? two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it is a right. battleship. So it's it's, it's yeah big, and I would argue beautiful. What? Um, so, nice. but now speaking of big and beautiful <gasps> dreams, <laughs> big and beautiful dreams. It's time for Musk Watch. <laughs> Okay, wow. first of all, first of all, we want to talk about the Tesla pickup. Now, we'd call it a ute. Uh, Americans tend to call them pickups, uh, pickup truck. And uh, it's been coming for some time, the Tesla pickup. Mm -hmm. And um, Ride the Lightning podcast, uh, hosted by a Tesla Model 3 owner whose name's Ryan McCaffrey, actually had some comments from Elon. He came on the, on the podcast and they had a chat. And Musk said... He's aiming for to price the pickup under fifty thousand dollars, and have it outperform the industry's best-selling vehicle, the Ford F Series. It'll also undercut the Rivian, their Rivian uh, pickup mm. truck. It's going to be a truck that's more capable than other trucks, says Elon. <laughs> the goal is to be better, a better truck than the F one fifty in terms of truck-like functionality, and be a better sports car. Than a standard Porsche 911. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's a big claim. I used to. Look, it's, oh, I'm off. We're over. Elon and I. So we got over. something <laughs> like the F150 is immense, yes. and the 911 isn't. No. And anyway, yeah. that's that's the claim. Chesto wrote a news story for us. Andrew Chesto Chester, and you can go to carsguide.com.au. You have a read of that. Considering a base 11 or clip 100 kmh in around 4.7 seconds, this pickup is going to be fast. Uh, but I, I, I'm just man sensing, can dream. is someone worried about the share price? Mm. Do we need yeah. a big yeah. announcement, another yeah. big dream to yeah. put out there? Yeah. I'm not sure. I, but he's revealing 
that he knows not much about yeah. cars. You're yeah. cottoning on here. Yeah. Yes, I'm. You're I, finally the coming penny around. Is dropping. Although the Kool Aid's wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. <laughs> yeah. having yeah. That effect He's a compelling it. person. Wow. He's a compelling person. And uh, which and the share price is a nice segue into the fact that there was a Tesla shareholder meeting uh, during the past week, mm. and um, the pickup. Will be oh, unveiled. Hang on a oh, it's wait, Elon. Oh, wait. It's Elon's calling me. Oh, did, you, <laughs> did you want to enter that? <laughs> he's <crowd>? taken <laughs> a <laughs> Did you? Well, he said at the Tesla shareholder meeting that that pickup will be unveiled in the US summer, so this year. Yep. Um, and the semi, the big uh, prime mover, yes. has been moved back a year to the end of 2020. Of course it is. So, has. okay, yeah. that's not, not another kind of non delivery so, but all right. You mean summer, back. like July, their time their now? Time. Correct. Yes. So, before the end of their summer, they've only got a couple of months to go. So, this pickup can is I, imminent. Can I just, really? um, can, can someone correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't they just hit their production quota, like, like you know, barely having hit it a month or two ago? For what they've been trying to, oh, do. Yes. and now he's saying that they're going to have Let's a, a, like Marcus, a Ford a, beating Ute, a Porsche. All it's in a one fair package. question. It's a fair question. He's out of control. He's time smoking w- too time much Mary Jane. Time will tell. I fear for his employees. Yeah. They yeah. have just busted a gut trying to get Model Three to you know yeah. six thousand a yeah. month. And or a week is it? A month. Uh, a month. A month. Yeah. No, no, a week. Yeah, yeah. Is sorry, it a week. Six thousand oh, yeah, a yeah. week. Mm. And now he goes right. Oh, uh, yeah. Pick up time. It's yeah, like, I'd be like, I'm out of here. Never fear, because the pickup quote. I think it's the coolest car I've ever seen. To be frank, uh, the truck will look cyberpunk, cyberpunk and like it's come from a sci-fi movie. Wow. Oh no, he sounds like yeah. someone's dead. He is. Yeah. <laughs> terrible. So that's what's coming down the pipeline very shortly. Also. Um, addressed the fact that Wall Street analysts have questioned demand for Teslas in 2019, that they're, they're, they're stockpiling cars and, and the demand has softened demand, off, yeah. to which uh, okay, the cool. dear leader said, I want to be clear, there is not a demand problem, absolutely not. Mm. There is not right. a demand problem. So the, the analysts were saying, <laughs> the analysts have been saying, Tesla cars are still expensive. Um, they're no longer eligible for the full federal EV tax credit. That's been reduced. Whoa. And the cheapest thirty-five thousand dollars version of the Model Three never kind of really sort of mm. came yeah. to pass. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that that's their point. But anyway, Elon says absolutely not. Also, he's considering moving Tesla further into the lithium-ion battery supply chain. Wait for it. <laughs> uh, we might get into the mining business. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh. Maybe a little bit at least. Oh, so he's oh, going to be mining lithium. Can we blaspheme lithium. on this podcast? Mining oh, lithium. He's an environmentally, oh, you know, so-called friendly f- company. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's going yeah. to be ripping the lithium out of the ground. <laughs> and look, wow. just to finish on a, a semi-jingoistic oh, note. Musky, I thought you knew a guy too. Uh, a bit of jingoism here. Uh, Aussie Robin Denholm, it was her first public appearance as chair of the Tesla board. Mm. So she hit the, the assembled crowd with, when you're changing the world, you need to have a certain amount of intestinal fortitude as an investor. And when I speak to many of you as shareholders, you have that in spades. <laughs> wow. What the heck? So there you go. So, and the pep talk, just yeah. to finish off, the shares, uh, Tesla shares are currently at $209. That's up a whole three bucks from $206 okay. last week. So no dip. But no bounce from any of those yes. announcements. It's not like it's, they're spiking on no, the news. No, no. Yeah. So if yeah. that was a, a, a bit of a play yeah. to get uh, yeah. a bit more interest into the share yeah. price, I don't think that's actually worked. Wouldn't it, wouldn't wow. he have an advisor behind the scenes saying, what are you, hey, Muskie, yeah. lay off the Mary Jane wine, mate. Hold on. You're, um, you an think, advisor? Yeah. Not, not when you've never made a mistake <laughs> in yeah. your life. I think, you know, it's the Trump situation as well, yeah. isn't it? Wouldn't you think? Yeah, that man would have an advisor yeah, too. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So they're mm. too scared to say, hold on, mate. Hold on, Elon. You're, uh, yeah. You said it. Yeah. You said it. I yeah. don't know, but yeah. it would appear so. Because the whole awesome pickup, but it's also going to be better. It's going to be better than an F truck. Take that it's man's gun and badge. Than an out of control. It won't be long before we'll be seeing it. But with that, wow. I have to say, we have reached the finish line. Oh. So thank you, Crafty. And no, thank you, Richard. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks to our producer, Mr. Pritchard, for his care and attention on the production front. Thanks, mate. Thank to join you. the conversation, <coughs> search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Remember, you can listen to and watch us on YouTube. So let us know what you're thinking, whether we'll like it or not. I just want to jump in there, mate. I mean, I'm new to the whole podcast thing and I appreciate your hard work. But does Pritchard... <laughs> 
never wear trousers during the recording? <laughs> no, what's, he's what's a no going? pants kind of guy. You, you just, just you get used to it. After I know a it's while. hot in here, you but I mean that's that's while. ridiculous. So. <laughs> we are so far underground. <laughs> yeah, the laundromat <laughs> is up no at rules? surface level. Oh, so Hang yeah. on, are you wearing trousers? <laughs> I'm not wearing trousers. That's it. Pay it forward if you're enjoying Tools in the Shed and let other people know about the podcast. And if you're accessing us via iTunes, please rate and review us. It would be much appreciated. Until next week, look, I was sitting in traffic the other day, which is probably why I was run over. (laughs) That's why you need an Uber Air. (laughs)